teams we passed um, so far this season. Um, they got a great you know, pass the game. They got a good quarterback. You know, he's seasoned. Um, he's been there for a while. Um, we saw him last year and the year before that. You know, we've had close games with them, and um, it's just going to come down to you know execute. What did you learn from the South Carolina game that will help you against this strong passing attack? Um, you know, we're just going to have to you know have a lot of communication like we did in the South Carolina game. You know, play aggressive, but also play smart, and um, you know, play in the ways that you know benefits the defense, and you know, have everybody working on the same accord. You know, not just out there on the island, you know, by themselves the whole time. You don't want anybody isolated this game, so we're just going to try to work together as a unit. Y'all making it kind of hard to find some possible negatives about this team. Uh, some people talk about <laughs> lack of pass rush. What's your response to that? Uh, I mean, uh, the teams that we have been playing, you know, we haven't been able to get a lot of pass rush, that is true. But um, we've been playing teams that have been doing a lot of quick game. You know, the ball's in their hands and not the quarterback's hands. You know, under under two seconds, you know, it's hard to, to, you know, get to the quarterback. So you have to find other ways to affect them, you know, like batted balls. And, you know, just trying to break up passes, you know, with the D linemen. And, and, you know, just to help out the secondary and then coverage and stuff. Yeah, Kirby was praising Drew Locke's quick release, you know, earlier. How does that affect what you guys try to do with D-line? Would you like to have a batted ball? Um, that's really all you can do, man. You know, you got to basically pass rush from the line of scrimmage, you know, and you know, just try to get back there as fast as you can and, you know, have good pocket push. And, you know, the, really the way to affect him is to make him step up, um, you know, get uncomfortable in the pocket. You know, that just comes with level pass rush. And, you know, everybody, you know, working together in that pass rush game. Are you surprised you guys only have 11 tackles for loss through three games? That's a different kind of stat there. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, it's crazy. Um, you know, we we've really have been getting, you know, teams that will quit game us the whole entire time, you know, just hitting, you know, quick routes and, you know, quick short passes just to get a couple yards. And it's frustrating sometimes, you know, especially for me as a D lineman, you know, I want to go, you know, make some tackles, make some plays and, and do stuff like that. But, you know, you got to play into the defense. You know, you don't want to, you know, be out there, you know, trying to be a superhero and, you know, basically hurt the defense and hurt your team. So. Jonathan, I'm sorry. But I think there's uh, three SEC West teams in the top 10. You guys are the only SEC East team in the top 25. Anybody have a chance to get to Atlanta except for you guys from the East? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I can't speak for anybody else's team. Um, we don't really try to look at the rankings and stuff like that. You know, we just take it one game at a time. But um, that's what you have to do. Um, you know, we have a tough schedule this year, and so do a lot of other teams. And we're just going to keep fighting through. You know, one game at a time. You mentioned that teams have been trying the quick passing game on y'all. Missouri had some success throwing downfield last year. Do you, do you expect to see that again? Because quick game hasn't really worked against y'all last year. Uh, it hasn't worked, um, you know, yet. But um, you know, hopefully that you know we just keep you know getting better at what, what we do, and you know that you know what they're doing doesn't affect us. You know, if we like I say every week, you know, if we play our game, you know, things will go our way, and um, you know, we just need to you know relax and stay composed, and you know, play Georgia football. Are you happy to see the game scheduled at noon? I know Coach talked about the advantage you guys feel like you've gotten the heat games. Um, I'm actually, you know, we we do practice in you know prime time heat of the day, which is really good for us. You know, it definitely works a lot of guys out. You know, and those games that that are in the, in the middle of the day in 96 degree weather, you know, stuff like that. You know, you are better prepared for it. But I'm glad this past week, you know. You know, with all the hurricanes, stuff like that, you know, hope everybody was safe and, and everything's good. But um, we pr played at noon, which really helped us, you know, kind of prepare for this next week because, you know, we do play at noon and, you know, they're back. So it's, technically it's 11 o'clock, you know, for us, you know, our bodies and stuff like that because they're our, um, I think, forward or behind, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, it just kind of prepares us for, for, for that. And I'm glad that last week, you know, we got to play at noon and just, to, just to get ready for this game this week. Does the concept of a pass rush against the quarterback that does get it out so quickly, does it almost seem overrated when you think about the things that you have to do that really can be effective against that kind of offense? I mean, you just have to kind of, you know, take whatever you can get, you know, kind of fight tooth and nail, you know, to, just to get to him. You know, you might not, you know, hit the quarterback. You know, our goal is, um, you know, just, just, to, just to do our job and, you know, to affect him in a way that helps us, you know, put us on top. You've been one of the key leaders from the beginning this season. Who are some of the younger guys that you've seen – roll up really fast through three games? Um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, especially with our secondary, you know, they've had to, you know, take on roles that, you know, people before them, you know, were seasoned and had a lot of experience and, you know, years under their belts. But um, I'm proud of really everyone that, that is on our defense and, and our offense, you know, that is stepping up. You know, Miko Hartman's being, uh, you know, a big player on offense for us right now. And DeAndre Swift and, you know, um, th these guys are just, you know, taking those leadership roles and, and you know, starting to, you know, affect other guys. and that. that that's something that's big for us. And, you know, defense, you know, you got, you know, your William Pools, your Richard LeCount. Um, you know, he's, he's having a lot of plays. You know, a lot of things are going his way. And he's working hard. And I'm just proud of those guys. And, you know, there's countless other numbers of guys. But, you know, uh, th those are just a few. I mean, not to 
You How mentioned that 11 a.m. kick alter your schedule. What time do you wake up or something like that? Uh, like I said, um, you know, last week really, you know, helped us out. You know, we, we woke up at I think seven o'clock, and um, you know, we had free game meal at eight. And you know, normally, you know, you have those, you have games, you know, that are later in the day. You know, you have your pregame meal. You want everybody to be focused and kind of quiet, and you know, kind of just locked in. But you know, when you have a game like that early in the morning, you know, that chatter and that talking is good because, you know, people are still halfway asleep. So, you know, we were pretty, you know, awake, you know, everybody was good. Everybody was having good conversations, going over keys and, and you know, just going over what they, what they needed to for the game. And I think that really, you know, like I said before, really helped us, you know, and prepare, it's going to prepare us for this week, just that we had to play unknown, you know, this past week. Offense is like to always talk about being balanced, but on defense, y'all are adamant that it's a stop the run first. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do in, in football period. I think that, you know, if you don't stop the run, the team is going to, you know, have the option to either, you know, run or pass on first and second down and, and just kind of control, you know, that aspect of the game. You know, if you stop a team and you don't allow them to run, you know, you make them one dimension when they have to pass the ball, you know, and then, you know, you start to, you know, pick off stuff from there and you just keep piggybacking off of that. Where do you think that's going this year? Um, I think that's good. You know, we have a goal. You know, we set it every game. I'm, you know, I'm kind of, you know, one of the leader, leading guys on the D-line. And, you know, um, before we go play, you know, we talk to each other and we say it every game, you know, what we want to hold the team to, you know, what, how many rushing yards they're going to get, you know. And um, we say that before we even go into, you know, into battle. So it's just kind of that mindset, you know, kind of play a game inside of the game. It's, even against a team like this where, you know, you got Drew Locke and Emmanuel Hall and it seems like they're going to be passing a lot, it's still – Stop the run first, and whatever they get. Most the game is. Um, yeah, I mean, they still they still have a, a you know running threat. You know they have a pretty big offensive line. Um, they're physical. Um, they're they're an SEC team. You know we played them years in the past, and they have been physical. They've shown that. And, um, you know, like I said, you know you stop the run, and then you have some. Fun. Coach mentioned a little sideline skirmish. It, it was love. You probably see that a lot more at practices than we do. But how do you explain it when players kind of get on each other, try and hold each other to that high standard that you have here? <laughs> I mean, it, like you said, it is love, man. You want to see everybody, you know, succeed and, you know, play to the best of their ability. And, you know, we have people on our team who, who notice that, you know, guys can play, you know, better. You guys that, you know, they have more potential to do things. You know, we're not going to let them, you know, basically waste their potential. You know, we're going to get on them. And, you know, it, it is all love. You know, like, we want everybody to be successful and everybody to, you know, to thrive and, you know, reach their peak. And, you know, that's just, that's just what you do. Sometimes it's tough love. You know, sometimes it's, you know, it's intimate. You know what I mean? You just got to you gotta get on people, you know, a different type of way. But it, it's never, you know, to, to penalize somebody and to make somebody feel like they're not part of the family because that's just what it is. But we have a standard for our family, and, you know, everyone has to, you know, play to that standard. And is there more talk after that or guys coming up going, hey, man, here's what happened? This oh, is of course. Game. I mean, it's football. You know, it's not always going to be, you know, relaxed and calm. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. I mean, you know. Um, so guys do get, get heated, you know, guys get, you know, um, just frustrated with each other. And, you know, you just talk. I mean, you go in the game, you know, stuff happens. It's going to happen. You know, you just keep moving on. It's always the next play. But, um, you know, we go in the locker room, we talk about it, you know, we hug each other, we love on each other. You're like, you know, bro, I love you. I'm telling you this because this, I think you can do it this way. And if I can help you get there, let me know. Something like that. You were right there, I guess. What was the younger upset about? Um, well, we had kind of a bust on defense. We didn't close um, as we should have, and uh, they gashed, you know, a pretty good run. And they did it, you know, two to three times. And the same same individual, you know, was not closing. And you know, we had to address that as a team. And we did. We came back. And we fixed it. That's what you did. John, you've been here throughout the culture change from from Mark Rick to Kirby Smart. Have those types of discussions, arguments, whatever you want to call them, have those become more often? More frequent as the the standard has changed, or do you think those? Um, have I want to say it's become you know more often. Um, it, it doesn't really happen. You know that's the first time that, that it's really happened this season. So um, you know you, you just kind of it comes up and you know you address it and then you know you move on. Um, we've had our fair share of you know arguments and fights and everything you know with with Coach Rick too when he was here. Right. You know it's football. I mean that's what happens. You know people get get frustrated. Like I said, you know people are going to get upset and it's a physical game and. You just can't let that stuff, you know, get to you and go to your head because at the end of the day, you are still with your teammates and that's your family. I mean, they go through the same thing you go through every day, and and, and that, you know, that makes a difference. So, you know, it is a little bit more invested, but it's more caring for each other. You know, wanting somebody to to be better for themselves. You know, just just for the team. Um, Jonathan, uh, yeah, it's kind of a super question here, but uh, how how important is it to? to uh, defend the tight ends in this offense. And secondly, uh, their leading guy, his name is uh, Albert Ekwe, 
So uh, I wanted to see if you if you could spell his name. Oh, I probably 100% cannot spell his name. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I'm pretty, he's a great player, man, um, and we definitely are going to have to defend our tight ends. Like I said, they have a lot of threats in the passing game, whether it's receivers, you know, running backs or tight ends. Um, the quarterback, Drew Locke, he's, he's a great athlete. You know, he'll make he'll make them right, and, um, you know, we just have to, you know, read our keys and focus on that, you know, lock in and, and you know, go through our game plan in a, in a very, you know, rigorous way. Thanks, Jay.